Oh, hey, Carter. How's hey, it going? Wh what are you wearing? Well, you know, safety's no joke around here. We take safety very seriously and... Sorry, I can't hear you. Scott Brown here. Um, today's video is all about the safety equipment I use in my videos. Um, I get a lot of questions about it, so I thought today we'll cover it. Can't click with gloves on, buddy. Doesn't work. So I've had a lot of questions about the safety gear that we use on the building sites throughout our jobs and I typically don't talk about that kind of thing unless you know it comes up in a video so I thought for this video I would dedicate from the top down dedicate it to the safety equipment that we use to keep ourselves safe on site. Starting from the top, the sunglasses. I've been wearing these for the last few months. I bought them on Instagram. I'll put links to everything down below as well. Safety Style is the brand name but basically they're like your typical uh, Ray-Ban style sunglasses but they put little windows on the side here they're for stopping things from flying around your sunglasses and into your eyes and they also have the clear versions here so these ones have been my go-to recently so I've probably got a bad habit of not wearing safety glasses I've been called out on it quite a few times in my videos so I'm trying to get into the habit of wearing these a bit more often but one area where I feel like my habits are good and that is wearing hearing protection I always wear earmuffs in my videos and I worked with a lot of older guys who never wore earmuffs and had bad hearing as a result of it, now I'm yelling. So I was pretty diligent from a young age and in terms of uh, the particular style of earmuffs I wear, just these ones, the ones that fold up into little balls, not that I particularly use that, but I use this brand because I've had no problems with this brand. This is maybe my third pair in the last six years. The first pair was exactly the same as this, they just got worn out so I got rid of them. I got a slimmer pair, a black pair that was more low profile and they had a comfier sort of headband on them. But then I felt like my ears weren't really uh, breathing enough. It might have just been, you know, psychological but I went back to these. Again, I'll put the links below. You can also get ear plugs but my ears have always uh, struggled with that kind of thing. I need like ventilation and, and but that could be an option as well. And then, if I'm working by myself, I'll typically wear a pair of Bluetooth headphones, like this. That way I can take calls, I can listen to podcasts while I'm working. They work pretty effectively as earmuffs as well. Mask. This is probably where all the questions are. Earmuffs come up now and again, safety glasses. But man, almost every other video someone will mention the mask I'm wearing and, and why and where I got it from and all the rest of it. I'll start from the top. Um, this is the RZ mask. I think this is an American company and they make a range of them with different styles and uh, made from different materials. This is the neoprene. It's kind of like a wetsuit kind of material. They also have like a more nylon meshy kind of material and they have different you know, this is like a shark's tooth thing. They've got different styles. So it's basically made up of this outer layer here that has the metal on it that pinches your nose and it holds the filters. And then on the inner layer, they have the replaceable filter here. 40 hours is the general use time before you have to replace this. So I typically use this mask when the dust isn't that bad. Maybe I'm working outside. Maybe I've got a vacuum attached to the saw. You know, like it's not um, a high dust environment. It's not as imposing, you know, it doesn't get in the way. But more often than not, I prefer a higher level of respiration and that is where this half face respirator comes in. This is a 3M respirator, I'll pop the name up there. It's actually pretty comfortable for something so big and bulky. Whoever designed it has put a lot of thought into how the straps fit and how it sits on your face. Sometimes with the RZ mask it feels like it's pulling on your nose because you're, all you're doing is strapping it around your back and there's nothing that keeps it up. Whereas this one has the straps on the top. So that's, that's keeping it from going down. And then you have the straps on the back that keeps it from going out. You can make constant adjustments to get that feeling good. Because of that, I wear this more often. In terms of where you get this from, um, I won't bother with that because I just got it from a random safety store in New Zealand. But I'll put the model number below so you can search for it wherever you happen to live. Now, if you want to go full crazy, full face respirator. That, oh, that takes away the need for safety glasses and you definitely don't need to worry about dust. So I wear this whenever we're doing insulation. I wear this whenever we're doing concrete dust. Anytime we're doing demo, I often put this on and it was actually Pido that put me onto it. 
As soon as you put that mask on, you're like... Oh, you're just invincible, eh? You feel invincible. Yeah, you can just basically just focus on whatever you're doing without worrying about anything getting in your face. Yeah. So if you're cutting something above you and everything's just falling down, you can just keep your eyes open and just not worry about yeah, yeah. breathing anything and... Take you, it just, off. you can just see everything, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It just allows you to focus on like the job better. So that's why we're... If you're doing renovations like we are, I would highly recommend it. You feel invincible in a full face respirator. Now, before we move on from masks, an important point related to masks, vacuum cleaners. We try and use a vacuum cleaner like this or like the Festo one that I have with every tool. If we can attach it to a tool, we do. So right now this one is attached to the drop saw here and we have this port here on the router. So anytime we do some routing, we'll hook up the vacuum to that as well. Circular saws have the ports on them as well. We try and get the dust at the source. Again, with demo, it's very hard to do that. Generally speaking, you're just pulling things apart with a hammer and a crowbar, so you can't quite get the dust then. But the combination of wearing a mask and having a vacuum cleaner attached to your tools is a great combination. Gloves. This is another area where people question my videos and say, Scott, why aren't you wearing gloves? You're handling all that treated timber. Very good point. I don't wear these enough, but when I do wear them, I like these ones. No particular brand. ProSense is this brand. Uh, no particular brand, but it's one of those fabric gloves that have been dipped in like a rubberized material. So they're not the most protective, you know? They keep the harmful treatment off your hands and uh, they generally resist cutting, but they have good dexterity. So you can feel what you're doing. You can actually grab things and cut things accurately. You do need bulkier gloves sometimes. Like when I was on this job, I pulled up a lot of ceramic tiles and tile underlay and uh, yeah, I don't want to cut myself when I'm doing that and the dexterity doesn't matter as much. So sometimes you need thicker gloves, but day-to-day -day carpentry, I use these. These are great. Here in New Zealand in particular, if you're like an apprentice or something, I would highly recommend wearing gloves like this with uh, the treated timber that we use because there's a lot of chemicals in there. That's another reason to wear a dust mask as well. Um, cancer causing chemicals. It says it in the literature. I'm not like making it. <laughs> it's not even a, a conspiracy. It's just the case. So having a vacuum attached to your saw and other tools and having a mask and glasses as well keeps the dust out of your eyes and gloves when you're handling the timber. Super important. knee pads. I've got a friend who's a uh, doctor, a radiologist. He basically spends every day looking at scans and he sees a lot of knee damage in those scans. He also watches the videos. He is very quick to send me messages whenever I am not wearing knee pads. He'll send me screenshots with like arrows pointing to my knees going, Scott, what are you thinking? <laughs> so shout out to Shout out to Jakub if you're watching. I appreciate the constant reminders of my tardiness when it comes to knee pads. Anyway, these are my favorite knee pads. These don't have straps on them, clearly. More often in the videos, I've probably been wearing these ones with straps around the back. These are Occidental leather knee pads, same brand as my tool belt. They're very thin, so they probably don't have enough protection on them. If you're gonna wear them every day, like say if you're a floor layer or something, maybe you're a carpet layer, you need something a bit more heavy duty than this. And the other thing is they've got the straps. Now the problem with the straps is it can hurt the backs of your knees. As you're bending over all the time and moving and sweating and all that, you start getting sort of rashes on the back of your knees. Well, I do anyway. So I prefer these ones, but the only way these work is with pants like this. So these are the Snickers workwear pants. There you go, Snickers. Yeah, they've been really good so far. Now I wanna pop the word advertisement here somewhere. These were uh, given to me by Luke at Euro Workwear Direct. They are like the Australian importers of um, Snickers work pants. He reached out to me on Instagram and said, hey Scott, I noticed you wear the Euro style work pants. Uh, do you wanna try some Snickers? And these have been great. These are my favorite pants so far. And these are my favorite knee pads. They also have uh, more heavy duty ones. That's what these are. 
super heavy duty. I was using these in the last episode when we're up in the attic space there. These aren't my style uh, because the pants are quite big and the only way to get this knee pad into those pants is by taking the pants off and putting it in the slot inside. Whereas these ones I can just put them in and out throughout the day as I'm wearing them and as I need them. Um, the other ones are also a bit baggier so I'm a slim guy, I like the fitted sort of style of these ones, whereas those other ones were quite baggy. So maybe if you like baggier pants, if that's your style, then you might prefer them. And certainly if you're a floor layer, um, I mean look at the size of that, that is like a, it's like a couch cushion, right? It's huge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Pato just said this is a couch cushion and this is a coaster. Last but not least. Boots! I know I said masks was the most common question, but I, I actually think it's probably the boots. The John Bull Cougar 2.0 advertisement. These were given to me. Blundstone, who owns John Bull, uh, gave me these for the last couple of years in a row. They're my favorite style work boots. I like the slip-on work boot. Just like that, you've got your boot back on. The slip-on boots help in general, um, especially with what we do. We're renovating houses, so often clients are living in the house and we're towards the end of the job, particularly like we are right now, we're going in and out all the time. So you need something that's easy to put on and take off again. It's all personal preference like any of these things. These are just the items that I use for safety. As long as you've got steel cap and leather, generally speaking, is quite durable and a nice thick sole. So if you stand on a nail, you're not gonna have it go through your foot. As long as those boxes are ticked, you should be sweet. But when I was a apprentice, I used to get the, the lace-up leather ones and I used to look at my boss who had these slip-on ones and think looks like you're gonna go horse riding or something they look like equestrian boots so I never understood why he got them but now I'm a bit older I don't really care how they look they're quite simple they're easy to put on and that's all that matters steel cap fantastic so there you have it Safety gear that we use as carpenters here in New Zealand, or at least that I use as a carpenter here in New Zealand. Let me know what uh, safety gear you guys use, if you'd recommend any that I could check out. Um, always keen to learn more about that stuff. And then maybe in the future I'll do another video about um, staying safe with the tools that we use, because that's a big one. Uh, let me know if you want to see that in the comments. Otherwise, have a good one. Catch you in the next exciting episode. Hey Pardo, nice jumper mate. Look at that, eh? Oh, you look good, eh? Now you know what time of day it is. Every day. Every day.